Okay, all right, let's talk about hives. You know, this was my very first Warhammer Fantasy Army, and this is back when the Plastics had a five-pointed star on their helmets, and I decided to do my high elves green and white, so they had this green five-pointed thing on their helmets that looked suspiciously like a marijuana leaf. And so my buddies called them the high elves. Yeah, it's that bad. Okay, I have not played against or with the new rules for High Elves. They've recently been redone. The, the, the models that have been done for this army are gorgeous. The revamped list, bam! Super powerful. It's awesome. Uh, the strength of the High Elves is magic. Really, you can dominate the magic game with these guys, and their magic really supplements nicely the movements and activities of their regular troops. And not only that, but they have a lot of things that suppress enemy magic, which is something you need to be careful of, because uh, a spell getting off at a key point, that can basically ruin the, the game for you. Let's start with core units, because that's really where you got to start. You have High Elf Archers weighing in at 11 points each. These guys have long bows. And but they cannot shoot in ranks like they used to. They used to be able to do a thing where they could, you know, the back ranks could shoot too, which is uh, was really cool. And I was really sad to uh, to see that go. Uh, but they do have long bows. Quite frankly, instead of taking ten archers for 110 points, I'd splurge and go 150 and basically get a wizard. Typically, a unit of archers and a wizard are going to have the same firepower as each other. Or I take a repeater bolt thrower, really, if you have the slots for it. Uh, not too big of a fan of archers. However, there is one little trick you can do with archers, and that is you can have them on the ground, instead of a hilltop, you can have them on the ground to support uh, blocks of troops. So basically what happens is if an, enemy, you know, if an enemy comes up like this and threatens your block of troops, you can have the archers reform and move into a position where if these guys are attacked, they can come in and flank and still have a rank to contribute there. So uh, that's one way to play your archers uh, defensively. Now, if you're going to have an army that's going to be running all over the board, uh, archers can play a supporting role, but really they're just left out in the wind and hanging and can be dispersed by enemy units coming in like this, and they will just shatter those archers because they just don't stand. So personally, I'd overlook the archers. They have sea guard. Sea guard uh, are, have spears and bows. So th they make a good defensive unit, but they are more, well, I guess for one point more, I would definitely do sea guard rather than archers. Hold on. Oh, except for they have regular bows, which are shorter range than the archers' long bows. Maybe I've completely lost you at this point. Um, <clears throat> So, not a big fan of Sea Guard because they, they, they try and do too many things at once. It's better just to have each unit do what it's supposed to do. Uh, spearmen are nine points each. They can fight in ranks. They also added something, uh, which is they have a hand weapon, which is um, if you have a hand weapon and a shield, you get not only a bonus for the shield, but you get in combat, you get another armor bonus for having a hand weapon in con conjunction with the shield. So, um, you know, in Warhammer, it's not who killed the most people, it's who won the combat. And you can win the combat with combat resolution, not only by killing things and ranks and banners and whatnot, but also by not getting killed. And that's why I'm a big fan of the extra uh, armor in close combat. So spearmen are all right. Um, quite frankly, I would just do another switcheroo because the High Elves have so many awesome, awesome special infantry that it's great. And they have a special word. They, they get more special choices. They get six in a 2,000-point game. So my recommendation would be take to token units of spearmen and archers to fill up your core and then get right to the good stuff. Um, a Phoenix Guard cause fear, which is great. And uh, they also have a ward save of 4+. Holy cow, what's not to like about these guys? Uh, white lions are stubborn. I'm a huge fan of stubborn. That gives you stopping power. The enemy comes in, fine, I'll just test on my leadership of eight 
uh, and um, you know you might not go anywhere regardless of how well you did that's how you deal with these pesky chaos players in my opinion is all you got to do is stop them and then if you can pick them apart because they're gonna have less guys they're gonna have less units and that's really a trick with Warhammer Fantasy is if I if your opponent has 10 units and you only have five you're gonna get outflanked and all those advantages you thought you had are just gonna get stripped away can you tell me when I get to three minutes 526. Okay, great. Um, silver Helms, those are dead weight. Get rid of the Silver Helms. Dragon Princes. Oh, oh, these are like the luxury sedan of cavalry. These guys got it all. They have huge movement, great armor. Um, the, the, oh, one thing to look for in your units is if the champion can carry magic items, uh, which is the case in a lot of the Dark Elf units. There's nothing not to love about that because that allows you to really customize the unit according to what you need to uh, what you what you're gonna face on the battlefield, and oh it allows customization of your army without buying new units and painting up new guys to adapt to a new situation. Uh, so dragon princes, Illyrian reavers are fast cavalry. Those are great, even though the models are a little uh, let's just say flamboyant. They have giant, these giant feathered helmets. And, oh, and not with feathers, not with manly empire feathers, which are bad enough, but with these giant, like, chorus girl ostrich plume feathers coming up. Ha ha! Bruh, 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 bruh. So the, something's got to happen with the Illyrian Reavers. Uh, quite frankly, I would just take silver helms and put unhelmeted heads on there and give them bows and call that a day. Maybe even grab some... Uh, uh, some archers and combine those into kits. Oh, and by the way, Ohio Elves also have um, plastic kits with eight cavalry in the box, which is a great buy. Unfortunately, that's Silver Hounds, which, as I explained, are dead weight. So Dragon Princes are great. Uh, the Lion Chariots are great. That's a new thing. Um, <clears throat> and uh, High Elves also have uh, repeater bolt throwers, which are just fabulous. So High Elf Army block of infantry, maybe a supplementary block, unit or two, maybe some dragon princes, Illyrian reavers, a couple of units of bowmen, and uh, some reaper bolt throwers up on a hill. Definitely get a pair because they only count as one rare choice. That's good for a 1500 point game. And there's, uh, there's your high elf army. So, and th they're great. They look good, they are good, and yeah.